on the roof. So we have a no heat call. And yes, it's March and yes, it's snowing. And yes, it's technically spring, but uh, yeah. Weather decided to stay into uh, stay in winter mode. So anyway, uh, this is my unit. How do I know that? I turned on the air conditioner. This is the only one that's running air conditioning. So that's how I found it. It's a good little quick tip if you don't know which one. And then of course I'm gonna label the heck out of this once I'm done with it. So in the future, I'll know which one's which. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and see why this thing isn't heating. So first things first, we gotta open up the electrical panel and disconnect the Y because it's calling for cooling. Uh, and then we'll go ahead and cycle heat and see why it's not coming on. So here we go. So we got the Y disconnected. We're jumping R to W, uh, fire in the hole. All right, we got inducer. And apparently it was working fine, just, just fine yesterday. Uh, and then it, it died today. This does have a pressure switch, I believe. So we gotta see if maybe that's a possibility. Uh, that could be an issue, could be dirty, uh, or it could just be failed, who knows. But I'm not getting igniter. Oh, there we go. All right, we didn't get any ignition, but the igniter did come on, so our pressure switch is closing. I did hear the gas valve clunk, so maybe it's stuck. Or for all we know, maybe somebody didn't pay the gas bill. <laughs> so we're gonna make sure that there's actually gas. What we're going to do is we're going to start by cleaning the flame sensor, cleaning the igniter, uh, and then we're going to make sure there's gas. Okay, so we got our igniter there. It's pretty dirty. Our flame sensor, it's not terrible, but it could use the cleaning. So we'll get that clean. Uh, I pulled out the burner, so I'll get those clean too. So we'll put all that back together, see if it ignites. Um, well, actually, before I do that, I'm going to make sure there's gas. Uh, but that should get cleaned anyway. So Okay, so we got everything cleaned up. Flame sensor, igniter, it's much better burners so we'll put all that back together and we'll see if we have gas now you gotta love Ben weather look at it. it's snowing and there's blue skies and it's sunny <laughs> this happened like in five minutes it just boom all of a sudden sun but it's still snowing so almost there but anyway uh, we do have gas I hooked up the manometer to our supply side which is this one here this is our blue one and our red one is gonna be our out our offset or what do you call it our out or uh yeah so anyway uh we want to see if the gas valve is indeed opening so we're going to watch gas pressure uh we also have our meter hooked up for voltage we want to make sure we're actually getting 24 volts to the gas to the gas valve itself just make sure it's actually receiving a call so anyway here we go okay we have ignition uh or the igniter no gas we are receiving 24 volts. So it looks like the gas valve may be stuck closed. Okay, now there's a little trick we can do. So we're gonna put this away. Um, this, these manometers do have a lag. So I wanna, you know, that's why I've been standing here watching it just to make sure. Uh, but yeah, it appears that we do not have gas flowing through the valve. And this valve is actually a, um, a universal, you can see here. So this has been replaced before. So, uh, and there is no drip leg anywhere to be seen. So, yeah. Okay, so here's a highly scientific method of getting the gas valve to function when you're receiving a call for volt, uh, for, for the gas valve. You wanna wait till it actually receives 24 volts. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna kinda just bang on it a little bit like this. Let's see if we can get it to kick on. Don't bang on it too hard. Here we go. So this valve's done for. All right, so we got our gas, our new gas valve installed. We just have to hook up the wiring. Now this is actually an exact replacement. So it's exactly the same valve. So here's the old one. So um, this one can do one with a pilot or you can do direct. So basically you'll use this to jump it out. Um, so here's the new one. I'm probably just gonna use the new one just so it looks newer. Um, but yeah, so. Pretty straightforward. We're gonna hook up our manometers on both sides, make sure everything, and then we'll probably have to adjust this uh, to get about three and a half inches of water column. Uh, with our elevation, maybe like 3.2, just kind of depends. Anyway, uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, 
get everything wired up and get the manometer set up. So we got our manometers, we got everything wired. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and bleed the air out so there's air between here and there. So I have this hose off. I'm outside, so it's not a big deal. So we'll turn that on. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and pop that on there. <laughs> Okay, now that, that pretty much has got rid of any air. So if you ever change out a gas valve or you disconnect the gas line um, and you try to cy cycle it for the first time, it might not light because you'll have air in the line. So it's always good to kind of clear that out. So um, we're gonna go ahead and cycle this thing on now that we got it all prepped. I'm just gonna make sure that's on all the way. And then uh, hopefully she works. So I believe the thermostat's already calling. So here we go. All right. Gas valve is turned on, valve is on, we have gas pressure, forgot to zero that out. Alrighty, fingers crossed. Okay, we got ignition. So we are good to go. Okay, so she's been running a while now, seems to be good. Um, I did have to adjust the gas pressure. Uh, the gas pressure was a little high. Uh, so anytime you install a new furnace or a new gas valve, you always want to adjust the gas pressure. Um, that's just kind of something you want to do. I know they're preset at the factory, but when they preset them at the factory, their incoming is going to be a lot different than what's actually happening in the field. In this case, we have seven and a half inches. In the factory, they probably have like 10 or nine or something. Uh, so anyway, we're at uh, 3.4. That's our differential down there. Okay, a little close so you can see. So I'm going to keep it there. That's like a nice good, because these things, uh, these wireless ones aren't that accurate. Um, I'm really going to probably invest in a SDMN6. For static pressure though, they're great. But for stuff that you need like real time stuff, not that great. So but anyway, um, hopefully this helps you out. So thanks for watching. Make sure you like and subscribe, comment, tell me what a horrible technician I am. Hit that bell notification and follow me on Instagram and Facebook. Thanks for watching.